All right, we're looking at the piecewise homework and the first one, number one, it wants us to work on evaluating uh, functions. Just a reminder that every input, put, input can only have one output in order to be a function. So we wanna find out which piece we're gonna plug into. So we have a g of negative eight. Well, x value of negative eight falls right inside that domain. x is less than or equal to negative two, which tells us we're gonna plug into that. So we're gonna have negative two times the absolute value of negative eight minus three. So this will be eight, negative two times eight minus three, that's negative 16 minus three, so we'll get negative 19. All right, the next one we have g of negative two. Um, negative two, uh, it's, the x value would again fit into here because we have that equal to. So we're gonna take negative two times the absolute value, here's our input, negative two minus three. So the absolute value will be two, negative two times two minus three, that's negative four minus three, which is negative seven. <clears throat> For a g of one half, we gotta again look, where is our x equal to one half? And that's gonna be in the second one. If I erase what I have drawn here, we're gonna be looking at the one half being between negative two and three, right? One half lives right between there. So we're gonna plug in two times that one half minus one, two times a half, that's one minus one, which makes zero. All right, g of three. Three again will fit inside that second function because of that equal to. So we'll plug in two times three minus one, that's six minus one, which will equal five. And the last one, g of 10, um, 10 is greater uh, then three, so we're looking at that third guy, and this is just a constant function, four, there's nothing to plug in, so we just say g of 10 is equal to four. All right, so that's using those pieces to evaluate a function. Now for number two, it wants us to kind of go the reverse way and uh, come up with some functions um, here. So when I look at this, there's a couple of things to notice. Um, my cutoffs, I'm gonna kind of mark them here, is it looks like at negative two and then also at positive two. So that's giving me an idea about my domain restrictions um, that it has to do with being at x value of negative two and x value of two. And then I see three parts going on there. So the first part that I see is this line. Um, and so I need to have an equation for that line. Um, you can also recognize it as part of an absolute value. That might actually be really easier right now um, because I can identify how much the absolute value curve has gone, like if you think about the basic function, how much has gone to the left and down, and then you can also see that there's a little bit of stretch to it. The slope there is gonna be um, a three. So you could kind of think about that, or you can graph a line either way. Um, if you're gonna do a line, then you're gonna to have to come up with um, the equation for it, um, and you have to find the intercept, which I think is a little bit um, harder to come up with. So right now, I'm thinking that that blue line, the easiest, would be noticing that it's part of an absolute value, it's just one side of that V, um, and then also um, it has been moved to the left two, so to show left two from the origin, we'd write X plus two, um, and it's been shifted down four, and um, it has been tripled, that's that vertical stretch, so we can write a three in the front. Now, it's looking like that. Um, again, my restriction is with that negative two, and it's happening when my x is less than negative two. <clears throat> now, you can include it um, because it does have no holes in it. So if I include it here, then I just won't include it in the other function <clears throat> that I'm gonna write next. So next, it looks like I have a parabola and it looks like a beautiful parabola, um, like no stretch going on there, but it is flipped upside down. So a parabola or quadratic is an X squared function. It's still at zero, zero, but it has been reflected. So we'll stick a negative on there. Again, it's only looking at that like that between the negative two and the two. I'm gonna leave the first one as a not including since I had the equal to right above, um, and then I can include the two there. So it's kind of like thinking that the red had a circle, open circle there and then a closed circle there, but it's been filled in 
by the blue guy. So that's why there's no hole or gap or anything. Um, now there was a hole here and actually as I write that, um, yeah, it's a hole there. Um, so if I'm going to graph that function, I want to make sure, again, it's my x values are greater than 2. I don't want to put that equal to on it. So make sure you don't have that. And that's a constant function. It's constantly 2. Okay, so that's one way to do it. If you wrote it as a line, just so you know that top equation um, works out to be something like negative 3x minus 10. So you can kind of play around with that if you want to. Um, but then what we have here is actually perfect. All right, for number 3, we're going to graph um, that piecewise function. Um, so the first piece I have um, is negative x squared. So I know that's a u flipped upside down and moved up 1. And then the bottom one, this is just going to be a line. And we know our slope is 2, and we know the y-intercept is 2. Uh, the other thing that we've been kind of talking about is seeing what's happening at these endpoints. So if I put a 2 in to my quadratic here, that will be negative. We'll take 2, square it, add 1. That's going to be negative 4 plus 1, which is negative 3. So I know that at 2, negative 3, I will have a closed-in circle. Um, for the other function, if again, I want to see what's happening at that little end point there, I'm going to take 2 times the 2 that I just inputted plus 2, which will be 4 plus 2, which will be 6. So I know that 2, 6 um, is on the graph. And again, I knew that 2, negative 3 was on the other part. Now, the 2, 6 is not on the graph. It's just that I'm going to get really, really close to that. So at 2, 6, I'm going to make that an open circle. And that's because there was not a line drawn underneath there. So those are just kind of noticing those are going to be my cutoff points. So um, from there, I'm going to kind of draw my graph, but I'll uh, remember those were my cutoffs. So my first graph, um, let's do the, um, the first line, that quadratic. So it's um, moved up one and reflected. There's no stretch or anything, so it's looking something like this shape. And then it's going to keep going and kind of keep going. We know it's going to go through that point, but I want to know what part to keep. Well, it says it looks like that when x is less than or equal to 1. So that's going to be everything to the left. Left is less. So I'm going to keep all of that and erase what I would have drawn here. And then for my line, um, the way that we graph our line is we would start at the y-intercept. Oops, let me change my color. The y-intercept of 2. And then from there, go up 2 over 1. Up 2 over 1 gets me to that open circle that I had drawn. Um, and then I could kind of keep going. It's going off the graph, but that's okay. Up to over one. And so you can see the line that's forming. Okay. But I only want to keep the part where I am greater than two. So that would be everything to the right, which means I'm going to erase all of that stuff. And so I'm just talking about this little section. And it's going off the graph. That's fine. Or off the grid that's drawn for you. Okay, so from there we can find, um, evaluate the function. You can use the graph or you can use the equation since we have both of those representations here. So f of negative one, really that's looking at the negative x squared plus one because it looked like that when x's are less than or equal to two. So if I plug that in, negative, negative one squared plus one, that's negative one plus one, which will be zero. And so to double check that, I'm going to look and see, oh yeah, negative 1 is um, output of 0 there. So you can kind of go both ways. Um, looking for f of 2, um, that's going to be, again, looking at that first one, because we can look at that when we're x is less than or equal to 2. So if I just go straight to the graph on this one, I know that when x is 2, I'm an output of negative 3. So I can just put negative 3 on there. But you can plug it in if you want to double check that. Now f of 3 that is going to be looking at the 2x plus 2 portion. Um, so I can, again, go to my graph. Here's my x value of 3 and, like, go up. It looks like it should be at 8. Um, but this one, I'm like, hmm, not totally sure. So let's plug in 2 times 3 plus 2. That's 6 plus 2, which does get me 8. All right. Um, a few more questions. Again, we're just working with that function notation. We did it earlier with um, functions that were not the pieces. Um, so we're just kind of applying that um, more here. So now I want to know what x values will give me an output of negative 1. So looking at my picture, um, I'm going to kind of draw on there. Let's see. Output of negative 1. That's a y value of negative 1. And you can see that I touch my graph twice. 
And so if I want to know where that is, it looks like one point something. So these are not perfect numbers. Um, but I know I'm looking at the parabola, which is negative x squared plus 1. And we're trying to see where that's equal to negative 1. So if I want to solve that, I could minus 1, minus 1. We're going to get negative x squared equals negative 2. If you divide by negative 1, that's x squared is equal to 2. Um, to solve that, you can just square root both sides. Remember, it's going to be um, both roots, so we get plus and minus radical 2. Would you put it in your calculator? It's about like 1.2 something, so we're uh, pretty good there. Uh, and that's both plus and minus, so make sure that you have both the positive and the negative um, square root of 2, or you can estimate it to be 1.2. Now, for our domain, um, we uh, if you kind of follow it along, I'm going to follow it with a little highlight here. Um, it goes down forever, which means going to the left forever to negative infinity. It kind of does this little bump thing. And then it's kind of solid here at x equals 2, but it jumps up and it continues on. So there's no really um, gaps in x values because even though we have a hole at x equals 2, um, it's covered by the parabola part. So we're going to have um, our domain being um, negative infinity to infinity. It covers all numbers. Now our range, there is going to be a little gap on that. So if I switch over to my range, again, thinking from the bottom to the top or floor to the ceiling, it's going to go down forever. But as it comes up, it stops at the height of the parabola before restarting again. So there's like this space right here where there are no y values, no outputs. So we'll say from negative infinity to 1, which is the height of our parabola, the maximum. And then it restarts again at a height of 6. It doesn't include that because of the open circle. And then it keeps going on forever because it's a line. And I'm going to put a little u to separate those two intervals. All right, um, for the x value where f of x equals 6, again, if you look at our graph, there is no x value of 6. We are an open circle there, and you can see that also within the range that we had just written. So we'll say that we are undefined there. Erase all of that so you don't get confused. redrawing what we were having. All right. Um, so then uh, the intervals of increase, our function is increasing from negative infinity to zero. And that's seen on our parabola. If we jump on it, we're going to keep increasing, 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 increasing all the way to zero. And then it goes downward. But then it jumps back up again and then increases some more. So I'm going to say from negative infinity to zero and then from, um, let's see, that will be two to infinity. Now, all of these, when we're talking about increase and decrease, they just put parentheses on them. That's just like a standard uh, convention uh, because you're not actually doing anything at a particular point. Uh, increase in is all relative. Like you have to see that your y values are getting bigger as you travel along. So we won't put a bracket on those. For a decrease, it's going to be that last little section, 0 to 2. So if I kind of go back and look at the graph, it's that part from 0 to 2 where we're going downward. Okay, so there's our picture. All right, flipping over to the last page here for number 4. Again, we're trying to find a function um, to describe what's going on here. Um, I'll do it similar to the last page, how I highlighted kind of the, the places where we cut our graph. And I see um, kind of three sections again. I see a parabola, which is really nice. It's been moved to the left one, but it's still doing that basic form. And then I also have um, the line down below here. And I don't want to lose track of my open circles because I covered them with that line. So just to make sure this is kind of going up, that is an open circle. And then for the blue guy, we are a closed circle and an open circle. And then for the last part, we are a closed circle and we're going up. All right. <clears throat> so starting with the red guy, that is a parabola. It shifted to the left one. And so I'll write it in that way. And it's not being stretched or reflected or anything. And it's looking like that when my x values are less than 0, because that was where 0 was located. Um, and then it's going to be that constant function, which is all the way down at, that's a negative 2. So it will look like negative 2. Let me actually use my blue here. Negative 2. 
when my x's are sitting right between the zero and the two, and I'm gonna put uh, equal to underneath that first zero because of the closed circle, and the other one would stay open. And again, similar for the red guy, we kept that open because we were, um, uh, or without the equal to sign because it was an open circle. For the last part, that, if you can take a closer look, is really just the identity function. Nothing special going on with that. <clears throat> so we're just gonna write x, or you can use absolute value if you want to. You can talk about it as absolute value shifted. There's a few different ways that you can write these pieces, uh, but it looks like that when x is greater than or equal to two. All right, we got one more to do here. <clears throat> and I'm gonna kind of focus in for a second um, on the endpoints to put those onto the graph first. So um, if we look at when x, x equals negative two here, it's gonna be negative square root negative two, and then minus two. I'm sure, doing it in different colors here so you can see all that negativity. And so really this is negative the square root of, um, that turns into positive two minus two, that's negative the square root of zero, which is zero. So when I inputted a negative two, I got zero. So that's gonna be one of my points where we kind of break off. So I'm gonna go plot that, negative two, zero, and that would be a closed circle. <clears throat> For the next one, I wanna see where x equals negative two, and then also where x is equal to one. So if I put negative two in there, negative two plus one, we're gonna square that, minus three, <clears throat> that's negative one squared minus three, one minus three is negative two. So I know that negative two, negative two is on, and that would be an open circle which kind of makes sense because if they're going to be above each other like that on the graph, it wouldn't be a function if they were both closed. Um, and then checking what's going on at uh, one for that same function, that same piece, we're going to have um, two squared minus three, that's four minus three, which equals one. So I know that one, one is going to be a, a kind of breaker on my graph. And that's also open circle. Um, and then for this last one, um, we'll see again what's happening at that endpoint. x equals 1. We'll take uh, negative 2 times 1 minus 3 plus 5. That's negative 2 times negative 2 would be in the absolute value. Turns into a positive 2 plus 5, negative 4 plus 5, which will equal 1. So again, 1, 1. Now, that is actually going to fill in that dot that we already had at one one. So that is actually gonna be closed there. All right, now to sketch the graphs, um, there's a couple different ways that you could deal with this first guy. Um, one thing that I showed you on a previous handout was um, if you wanna take that negative out to really like see the transformations that we've been doing, it would be moving um, to the left two and reflecting across the x-axis um, or over the y-axis, I mean. <clears throat> so I, I know that it's normally a little U shape, or not U shape, <laughs> how about you? Normally it's looking like that, but we're gonna do um, two reflections and also move it to the left too. So when I say two reflections, well, it's gonna flip over and be that direction, but then it's also going to flip over. Let me fix that, there we go. It's gonna flip over, I don't know what color's better, um, because of that reflection over the x-axis. So we have that all that negativity, but we also have that it's moving to the left two spaces. So ultimately, what that's gonna get me, if I erase the first ones, is um, my graph is going to be right here. We already know it's closed, looking something like that. Okay, so that's the first piece. Um, for the next piece, let's highlight that in red here. Okay, so this is a parabola. It's shifting to the left one and down three. So left one and down three would put me right here, left one down three. And it's gonna um, grow left and right up one like that. But we know we're not gonna fill in that circle already. And it's gonna keep going, but I know I'm gonna stop because of that little cutoff there. Now that section is going to be this guy, which is the absolute value. It is shifted 
um, to the right three and up five, it's also gonna be reflected um, downward and stretch. So if I go to the right three up to five, that's where like my vertex is, and I'm being stretched by two. So that's left and right one. Instead of going just down one, I'm gonna go down two. And then play connect the dots. But I know that I'm gonna have to stop at that first dot and then this one keeps going forever. So that's my sketch. That's kind of doing it without the erasing, just making sure that I use the endpoints. You could draw the whole function if you want to and then do the erasing based off of those endpoints, however you'd like to do it. So hope that was helpful.